Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Suck Talks. I'm Craig Dale, your host, and together with our special guests, we'll take a deep dive into the topics, challenges and opportunities facing SAP users today. Please make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. I'm delighted today to be joined by Simon Nichols, Founder and Wellbeing Director at Thrive. So welcome again, Simon. And if you've listened to some of our previous episodes, you may well have heard Simon before. And as many of you may know, we've been working with Simon and his organisation to deliver many of the Huge Group's mental health and well-being initiatives over the last 18 months. Today, we'll be discussing positivity and happiness with a focus on how we can take command of our thoughts and feelings to overcome adversity and the onslaught of negativity that our world and our media seem to like to portray. More on that a little bit later. But as we're recording this early in 2022, I just wanted to ask you, Simon, Did you make any New Year's resolutions? And if you did, have you kept to them? Uh, Good uh, good afternoon, Craig. And New Year's resolutions are really interesting. And I don't know when I first started sounding like a politician, which is that I'm not actually answering the question, but I'm talking around the question. And I do apologise. But the reason I wanted... That's very, very important, Simon. Build it in. The 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 fact about New Year's resolutions, and, and and by the way, I am so glad to be uh, to be back on uh, on Sug Talk. It's uh, it's uh, it's genuinely is a, a highlight of a highlight of any month that we that we do these recordings, and I'm so grateful that you keep asking me back. So uh, thank you for that. But resolutions are quite interesting because they're. I, I, I did a, I did a little I did a little bit of research as I, as I as I always do, and when we when you look at resolutions and and why they're so important to people and especially on that first of January, is that for a lot of people it's um, resolutions are about control. I've lost something. I'm out of control of something. Whether that was I was drinking too much, I was eating too much, I was I was doing too much of something. And so when we have that ability to regain, regain some control, uh, that's what that 1st of January really does to us. It allows us to gain that, that control. So in doing a lot of this research, which I have done over the last six months, I actually found that for a lot of people, resolutions don't work because we try and regain a, a little bit of control for a little period of time. And then we realize that actually either we can't, stop drinking we can't stop smoking we can't stop doing whatever it is we're trying to limit and then we feel a bit of a failure because oh do you know i couldn't even stop for five days now i know later on we're going to be talking about reframing and habit stacking and all of that good stuff so in short no i didn't make any new year's (laughs) resolutions (laughs) because i've i've found that um there's already too much disappointment in in the world as you were saying earlier and i think adding my own disappointment on top of uh, everything else that's going on uh i decided to know um what i am going to be doing though and and what we're going to be talking about later is i'm trying to be kinder this year and it's a weird thing to say isn't it all try and be kind but I'm genuinely, I'm, I always felt that I was a kind person anyway. But I, what I'm thinking this year is actually, can I do anything more? If, I'm, if I know that I'm doing something that is going to make someone better, can I do anything more? So I'm almost trying to be kinder. So I, can, I, I use kind as a base and I'm trying to do a little bit more. And I think um, I said this to someone the other day and uh, I said, what's the worst that can happen? Someone else feels a bit better about themselves. And I think that's a brilliant thing to have. I would, I would completely agree with you, and I certainly agree with you on the the resolutions as well. I, I, I never made them, but I, I think you know if you're looking to set objectives or goals, like you say, the goal to be, be kinder through the year, you can do that at any time of the year. But like you say, I do agree that that first of January does allow us to hit maybe a reset button if if we want that uh you know to switching it off and switching it back on again the way to fix everything in the technology world anyway it seems to be uh but yeah i, I do agree with that and there was a saying that i've come across uh, a few times which is what what is it uh he who breaks a, a resolution is a, is a weakling but he who makes one is a fool 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've always steered clear of making them because I'm probably going to break them anyway. But uh, yeah, thank, thanks for that, Simon. You know, the last time um, we met... What, sorry? I was going to say, sorry, Craig. What, what, what was really interesting, though, is what, you use the word objectives and goals. Now, I love objectives and goals i think we should all have objectives and, and goals but because we we map them as resolutions and we, it's going to be like life-changing whereas if my goal is to maybe drink more water well that's a nice easy goal that i can have and if i fail at a goal i just choose another goal so i think you should i think we need to start a new thing there craig i think we need to goals and objective setting rather than resolutions love it love it absolutely and the last time, just reflecting there, and the last time we met, which was at our uh, You Guys of Connect conference uh, at, at the end of November, and I, I mean, I'm sure you were as happy as me uh, to be able to see everybody in person again. Uh, and it was just, I, I don't know, a, a very positive atmosphere, I felt, especially bringing the community back together. So just to begin with, I was wondering how, how you found the conference, Simon, and whether you had any key takeaways from the mental health and well-being sessions, but also conversations, perhaps, that, that you had there. Yeah, the the problem with my uh, with my with my ever switched on brain that I ever have. Whenever says anyone says how did you find it, I always like to you know to, to quip. Well, I just came out of the train station, turned right. But um, how what you, you you didn't quite clearly mean that. You said how did I how did I mean there? And and the reason I brought that up is we um, we often um, uh, we're, we're doing a lot of neurodiversity training. I think I mentioned to you offline as well. And when you when you ask a question like that, sometimes we have to think of that clarity of thought of uh, of how everyone else is going to. Well, how do you find? It. Well, I did. I turned right out of the train station. But anyway, I digress. Um, I thought the conference was incredible. I personally, I had an amazing time as a uh, as an organisation. We were there for the first time, uh, uh, sort of uh, as, as as part of the as part of the event. And the conversations that I had were incredible. And when I say incredible, it um, although there was obviously there's still an SAP slant in everything we talk about, and my and my history has been SAP, but I was really able to talk to people about stuff. And what was really encouraging to me was that two individuals, two members, came up to me completely separately, separate uh, separate organisations, separate individuals, and they both wanted to talk to me about a situation that was going on in their life and for no other reason than they've heard me on the webinars and they they felt that I might be able to to help them in a, in a small way and so if we cut through everything else that was that was incredible about the conference which was everyone getting back together the amazing session that we had as the the celebration night where everybody really just sort of connected and and and, and let their hair down the, the two individuals were that, uh, that I spoke to, and, and I, I thank them profusely for, for coming up and talking to me, was they, they, just, they just really moved me personally. And I thought that was the power of this collaboration that we're, that, we're, that we're doing as part of the SAP user group, which is actually connecting all of our members to something a bit more important, which is, which is them. And if I was to, I, you know, if, if, if we was to just one person but the fact I had two people come up I just think that shows to me just how powerful what we did in 2021 really was no fantastic that that just it just makes it all worthwhile doesn't it it, it really does it really does and and that, that that's really good to hear and you know I'm delighted you were able to be there to, to help and, and and support our members in that way and as, as we move on to kind of our, our main topic uh, around, you know, how can we create this pool of well-being and happiness to draw upon when things do get too much? You know, we mentioned the, uh, the negativity in the world that, you know, it seems to be around us. And, of course, the media seem seem to like to thrive on if you like you know we we just hear if there's any positivity out there in the news in my opinion there's always 
a trumping story for them that's going to be a negative spin on something. Uh, and I, I just wondered if, if what your thoughts were on this, uh, Simon, whether you feel there's too much negativity going around the world and, you know, perhaps even do we need to cut ourselves off from the news? That's a fascinating question. And this is the answer that I'm going to give, which is obviously is my opinion, uh, is, is definitely a not as I do answer because um, everything that I'm about to say now is my personal um, my personal opinion. And that is when you say about cutting yourself off the news, that's exactly what I've done. I have very little knowledge of what goes on in the outside world. I get most of my news from sort of indignant friends on Twitter who will, will, will put a comment about something and I'll realise that something is going on with the government uh, again uh, or something is going on with climate change. So I'm not completely unaware of what goes on. I just choose to access my news in a different way. So if there's something going on within climate change, I will, uh, or within a different, a particular country, I'll look at uh, the, uh, the the appropriate websites that, that actually look at uh, look at that as, a, as, as, as expertise. Similarly, what I won't do is go to any of the mainstream tabloid newspapers because, and, and my wife is, my wife is a, is a news uh, fiend, so she will be going out and seeking all the news. So if I really do want to find out what's going on in the world, uh, she will tell me. Now, the reason that I chose to do this was, again, was a very personal reason, was that, like you said, there's a, and there, and there was a, there's, a, there's a wonderful term that's come out, wonderful, it's a horrible term. It's a term called doom scrolling. Uh, it's genuinely, it's going into the dictionary at some stage. And it's that when we go through social media and we're like, oh, look at, look at all the stuff that's going on in the world that's, uh, that's bad. And what I was finding was that I was getting very frustrated I was getting very frustrated and I was getting very angry with the world. And whilst we need frustration and anger in our lives, because they are very valid emotions, it was I was getting frustrated and angry about something I couldn't control. And we're going back to that control element again. And so what I thought was, well, why don't I get rid of or excuse myself for the things that were outside of my control? And that's why I decided to step back from that mainstream media. Now... Yes, it means that I maybe not not know every minute what's going on in government, in parliament, what's happening in the latest uh, Brexit uh, uh, elements. But what it means is that now I can focus all of my positive energy, and we'll talk a lot more about positive energy later, I think in a local way, which is to focus on me, my friends, my family, my work colleagues, people that I people that I want to to help. And I think by having less negativity in my life, enables me to do something a bit different. Now, when we start to think about negative bias, and I love the fact that you use the that pool of happiness and the pool of well-being, I'm going to touch upon those in a little bit uh, a little bit later as well. But the reason that we have um, that negativity bias, and there's lots of lots of articles out there that people can read, but it was the it's the fact that when we're facing something, news, whatever it is, our minds will automatically drive down into that negative. We will find negative news five times as quickly, more commonly than we find positive news. In fact, our brains sometimes skim over positive news, looking for the negative. And the reason we do that, the reason that we have such a um, why those unpleasant thoughts, nasty emotions, um, the things that we've done in a social situation, the reason that they have a greater effect on us is because negative thoughts, negative emotions normally involve more thinking. Because if I say, oh, do you know what? That was a brilliant presentation I did. You just go, yeah, I did a brilliant presentation. Move on. If you go, oh, that, that presentation didn't go well. I didn't do this, 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 and this. And so we, we, we collectively, as, as a species, we focus on the negative. Why? Because it's what keeps us alive. When we think about flight and fight and freeze, it's our, it's our stress uh, um, our indicators that are coming to the forefront. So when we think about negativity, we're drawn to it and we focus on it. So what we're going to do, hopefully, for, the, for, for, the, for some of the remainder of this podcast is to talk about how we can shift that negative bias and bring it into positive. Do you feel the same, Craig? Do you, do you think that you dwell on the, the negative things more? 
Oh, we, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, in in lots of areas, uh, uh, and I think there's from from my perspective, like so, say for instance, you know, we were just talking about the conference. When we do the conference debrief, we 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 look at the feedback, we look at everything, but we focus on where we can be better. So in effect, what we're doing is we're focusing on all the negatives because they're the areas that perhaps we can improve on. But then we have to bring it back and consciously bring it back to say, yes, but 98% of everybody said we either exceeded or met their expectations. Let's not forget that. That is at the top. There are tweaks we can do. There are only small tweaks, but they're the things that we do. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, and that's a, again another interesting angle to it because we're now we're now starting to think about reframing and we're starting to think about uh, the, the the positive the positive affirmation that I can give myself to improve next time because I think if you go back and listen to our first podcast that we recorded, Craig, I I didn't shut up. I genuinely, I, and, and, and I mean that in even the bits where, where you were talking and I was agreeing with, and, and, uh, you know, and I, 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 when I listened to it back, I must think it must've been really difficult for anyone to edit that podcast. So hopefully Chris has got a little bit better, but if um, anything that we can do to edit this podcast is, um, because what you've done is every, when I listened back to it, I thought I need to stop. I need to stop and I need to draw back and I need to just hold myself really quiet while the next person speaks. And because when I first listened to it back, I didn't like what I heard. And so I've done everything in my power now to make it, and hopefully the podcast listeners will agree, to make it a little bit of a listening, a better listening experience for everyone. But you're right, because we, we, we if we think about it as, oh, do you know what? I, okay, that didn't go as well as I wanted it to. So I'm going to do it a little bit different this time. But hey, wasn't I brilliant? And it's just coming back round again to that positive thought process right at the end. Um, and you and I know about it. With some, I, I won't use the S word, um, but we talk about the S sandwich, don't we? Whereby we, we give a little bit of positive praise at the beginning. We give a little bit of negative in the middle and then we positive it up. And actually negative is not what we're talking about. The critical or um, just a, um, pointers for better. So if anyone, if you're ever in a review, you want to tell someone how great they are, the things that they might be able to do just a little bit better. And then, by the way, how great they are. And that's the way that we should be approaching our lives. Yes, we're brilliant. Things might not go according to plan, but you know what? We're brilliant. And as long as we keep repeating that, we'll uh, we'll achieve something very good in our lives. Yeah. And, you know, you, you've mentioned there some, some a, a, a couple of key strategies on that already on how to kind of create a bit more positivity, perhaps, out of out uh, negative situations and you know as, as we, we we face the onslaught of negativity are, are there any other strategies that people can maybe adopt to protect themselves and create a more positive environment yeah it, yes there you go there's a nice simple answer yes there are lots of things so, um, to, but again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw into the negative first of all, because uh, again, what we need to do is if we're, if we're going to change for positive, we've got to appreciate the negative. And these are actually the traits of a negative thinker. Now, for anyone out there thinking this is a Simon having a go, it's, it's genuinely not. These are the psychologists' traits of a negative thinker. Negative thinkers always worry. Negative thinkers are pessimists. Negative thinkers complain a lot. Negative thinkers hesitate to experiment. They normally underachievers. Uh, negative thinkers are energy suckers and they have limited experiences in life. Now, I didn't even like saying that out loud, but when you think about what negative thoughts do, it puts us into a place where there is potentially no happiness. And we're talking about very severe anxiety, very severe depression, uh, sort of areas of mental ill health that maybe we struggle to come out of. And But that's not to say that everybody who thinks negatively is going to be all, all of those seven traits. Those are just the seven traits we can do. So what we're, what we're thinking about is if we, and if we take each of those seven and, and create a positive spin on it, because if someone's always worrying about something, well, what can we do to not worry? And for many people, you say, oh, it's easy for you to say that, Simon. Well, it, it absolutely is, because 
if um, it's it's much easier for for anybody to give you advice. To uh, when we talk, we call, we call it positive affirmation, don't we? It's like, oh, cheer up. What's the worst that could happen? Well, actually, the worst is happening to me right now, and you telling me to cheer up hasn't done a, a, a jot to, to help me. But what we can say is, if you are always worrying about something, well, what can we do, and what can you do to help you reframe those thoughts? And it might be that you need some support. It might be that if if overwhelming worry is ruining your day, moving you in a different direction, then actually recognising that you worry a lot might allow you to change that, might allow you to go and seek some support. And it's the same for pessimism as well. If I'm always thinking the worst, what do I have to do to change to think for the better? And that's where we go to that positive pool of well-being. We can all feel happy but we are the only ones that can make us feel happy. We can draw happiness from other people. We can draw happiness from comedy programs. We can draw happiness from from incidents in our lives that that have made us happy. And what a lot of people don't realise is that happiness is is not a short-term effect. It's um, We can feel happy. We can feel elated. We can feel up. But ultimately, we then settle down into our balanced life of whatever that is, with the hope that we don't go too far down into the the upset, the anger, the hurt, the frustration area. And if we do find ourselves dipping down, if we are complaining about a lot of things, if if we're not taking that next leap, that next uh, experiment in our own lives, well, what can we do? Can I draw upon that pool of happiness, that pool of well-being, which I've built up over many years, but I've probably forgotten how to access it. So when we start to think about some of the techniques that people can do, well, if they feel that they are not achieving what they want to do, or if they are one of those people, which will be energy suckers, if you feel that that people think that they're getting down when they're talking to you, what about reframing? What about actually just trying to say something positive to yourself? that will actually ultimately result in you being able to say something positive to someone else. Because we right. often talk about being able to support each other, but we need to support ourselves first. Yeah, you know, when, when we're talking about that, that you know, you, you mentioned their reframing. And, you know, when, when we think about the concept of reframing thoughts and habits, you know, for, for some that, that may feel like it's easier said than done, so to speak. And, you know, it... it how how easy is the process? What 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 is the process to go through to do that, Simon? It's a it, it's a very it, it can be a very lengthy process. So if we talk about habits and we can use bad or good habits, a habit to be created is for an average sixty nine repeats. You have to do something sixty nine times for it to be part of your natural or normal or usual routine. So if you want to go running as part of your New Year's resolution and you want to make it something that's going to happen in your day, every day, the average time you will need to do that is 69 times. Now, unless you're going running twice a day, that's three months. A lot of people, when they start their running, their couch to 5K, they do it for a couple of weeks and they go, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into this. It's because we're probably two months out of it becoming a habit. So I think the thing that most people struggle with is that reframing thoughts, creating new habits, good habits, take time. We don't just walk in and, unless we're Beethoven or Mozart, or to, and, and know how to play a piano. We have to practice at it. Just like a lot of what we do around mental health and mental strength, we have to practice at it. So we have to practice thinking differently and again like you say a lot of people are thinking well that's more easier said than done and and, and it genuinely is but there's such a wealth of support out there now and how to retrain your brain retrain your thoughts that anyone who's thinking they can't do it alone that's fine ask for help ask for support go to a running club go to a running club and set yourself up that you're going to go to the running club every single week and then in six months see if you failed, because you won't have done you, it would have become a habit and you'll get involved in that club and you'll be feel part of something. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It's like, uh, I suppose in, in simplistic terms, you know, 
not from the habit perspective, but kind of the, the, the thoughts, the feeling. You mentioned pessimism before and, uh, you know, how, how can we be more optimistic? It's almost like, can you find a silver lining in everything? And you you, you should be able to find some bright side. You know, I'm uh, we were chatting earlier and uh, I'm at home isolating, tested positive for COVID yesterday, not with the equipment that I really needed for today, but from the bright side perspective for me is that I'm due to be flying off on holiday in the middle of February. And as I've got COVID now, I'm a much less risk that I'll test positive before I have to fly. So that is my bright side. Now is a better time than in three weeks time when I'm looking to go away on holiday. So there's always a bright side to something somewhere uh, to, to look at. And, you know, how, how can, you know, positivity and happiness help us deal with adversity? Well, when you think about, um, and let's let's turn this back into the workplace as well. Let's let's turn this into um, how how organisations as well can help their their employees feel feel happy and positive. We we know that uh, happiness and um, that that positive outlook on life actually influences luck. Now, it necessarily doesn't influence luck, and you may not even believe in luck as a, as a concept. But positive people who are going through life thinking good things are going to happen to them tend to see good things happening to them. Those that go through life thinking, I'm not very lucky and everything's going to go wrong, tend to see lots of things going wrong. They tend to almost gloss over the positive. So when we start to think about how it can help us get with adversity, it's about building up that pool that we talked about earlier. And it's about... Uh, as you said, there, there's a, there's an absolute negative. You're 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 at home and you have got COVID. That's that's pretty rubbish. I'm going on holiday soon. Totally reframing it. Is there any little jobs that you need to do around the house? Because you can't go out. I'm afraid, Craig. So, is there anything you can do that 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 you normally don't get enough time to do? <laughs> So you, you can reframe the, your, your, yourself even in those really small situations. And it's really just about, and it's it's not about putting a smile on everything. It's not about putting a brave face on, but it's just about thinking, okay, well, life has dealt me this. What's the best thing that I can make happen? What's the best thing that I can do? And as we say, in a work perspective, if you've got a deluge of, of stuff coming in from your projects, ask for help. And that's the, the simplest thing that you can do to start reaffirming that happiness. Because if you've got some help, if someone is there ready to support you, to be able to give you that help, it's, 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 really, it's really quite important for you to feel supported. And you can, you can leverage that into your pool of happiness. Because if you take all of the positive things that are going on, if someone was to help you, you can take that, you can store that and put that somewhere that you can use it again. And it's uh, people think, oh, I can't, I can't store someone helping me. Well, hold on, you know, the time that that person stepped in, took away some of your problems, that was a really nice thing they did. Because what they gave you is one of the most important things in the world, which is time. It's often stuff that they can't get back and maybe they've interrupted their projects to help you out. So take that feeling, store it somewhere inside, and know that for the most part, people will always offer you help. Yeah, and, and I, I like that. You know, you, oh, never be afraid to ask. I, I do like that. And just going back to, to what you were talking about, about uh, pessimistic people, optimistic people, and, and people feeling that, the worst is going to happen and, and it tends to people feeling that the best is going to happen and it tends to. Is that very similar to what we were talking about on a previous podcast discussion around when we're out, let's say we're outside walking and if you're walking along looking at your feet or downtrodden, showing the head down, you miss the world of opportunity than if you put your shoulders back and looked up and looked at the rest of the world and what is out there. And is it that that we, we're not seeing the opportunities because we're not opening ourselves up to them? Yes, and I think when you when you when you think that the, the I mean you think about Chicken Little. 
chicken little, the, the sky is falling in. And it was always going to be, the, the catastrophe was always going to be that the sky fell in. So Chicken Little didn't see all of the goodness around them. He didn't see the friends and the family that were trying to help him. And you're absolutely right. If you, if you walk outside the door and you've got your head buried in your phone and you walk along, your, 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 your chest is going to be constricted anyway. You're not going to be able to get the air in that you need. You're not going to be able to get your lungs open to the full capacity. And, um, and, and what that means for you is that your going to um you're not going to in you're not going to get as much oxygen in as you possibly can and um again what that means is that your your brain is going to be isn't going to be as oxidated as it needs to be which means it's not going to be as awake as it would normally be outside as well so so you're right standing tall walking tall and actually getting all those sensory and audio inputs in is going to make you feel better. It's a, it's a very strange way of, um, of looking at it, but it really will make you better. Do you, do you think that, you know, when we're looking at these strategies, um, I've already touched on working from home, working from the office, and, you know, some of the different challenges that you have working from home and, and working in the office and some of the uh, kind of positives and negatives they, they can both bring. And, of course, when we're thinking about, you know, people that perhaps have worked from home throughout the pandemic and are facing the challenge in, in their eyes, perhaps, of, of going back to the office, can some of these strategies be uh, utilised by them to help them in that? It is, and it and it's again, it's going back to that um, the, the those thought processes. So, as, as you know, Craig, I I I beat on all about our thoughts affect our feelings, affect our behaviours, and yes, for a lot of people, they've been stuck at home. They've they've not had that human interaction that they were they they, they potentially crave, and yet what they've done is they've made the best of it. They've made the best of it. They've 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 put a po their positive hat on, and they've said right, okay, and they've got they've got a workspace that works for them. And now you've told me I've got to come back into the office, so I've got to reframe once again my thought process. I've got to I've got to pretend to like Glenda from accounts. I do apologise to anyone called Glenda in accounts. Um, I've got to I, I've got to be I've got to be part of something again. And actually, do you know what I've really liked? Being at home, I thought I'd missed the social interaction, but it's been great for me. So once again, we have to think about something differently. We have to think about why we're having those feelings of, of maybe about apprehension about going back into the workplace. Well, I'll give you a reason for that apprehension: is we've been eighteen months away from that workplace. I can't really remember what I had to do, where I had to park. My routine has been changed. I've just got into a wonderful working from home routine. And I think that's why we've seen organizations that have taken people back too early. Uh, or maybe not, or maybe not given them that that level of interaction. Right, working from home's off. You're coming back into the office now. We've seen quite a few people making a decision to leave that organisation because actually you didn't give me time to readjust. You didn't give me time to draw upon my happiness pool to make sure that I was okay going back. And we talk all the time about it's okay to not be okay. What does reasonable adjustment actually look like for an organisation when they're when they're encouraging people to come back into the office? And I think it's just that thinking differently will make us behave in a different way. Yeah, and I've, I've seen other things on on the flip side to that as well, where you know people have struggled working from home, and you know people have opened offices just to give the opportunity for for people to escape the home environment if you like you know I, think I remember in one of our earlier uh, discussions and in, in one of our earlier series around working from home and you know there, there was that, that quote is you know that I can't remember whether I'm actually working from home or sleeping at the office and you know the strategies around how that can help but like you say if you've been doing that for 18 months you're now in that routine you're now in that mindset and a change is a change and it's going to be a big change as it was back in perhaps March 2020 when, when people all of a sudden needed to work from home. Now it's going to switch again and, you know, easing into uh, a, a new environment and a new way of working again 
is is uh, probably a good strategy to go down. And you know, just as we we come towards the end of our discussion now, Simon, I just wondered whether there was any further or any one piece of advice that that you'd like to share with our listeners. Yeah, the the, the main thing I think about, and it was um, it only really sort of hit me a couple of years ago, and there's only one person responsible for your happiness, and that's you. There's only one person responsible for filling up your pool of happiness, your 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 well of well-being, and that's you. But quite often we we say we rely on almost someone else, maybe our organisation. I come into this job and your job doesn't make me happy. If a job doesn't make you happy, if your the way that your life is going doesn't make you happy. Um, Matilda said this best, and she said, you know, if you, if you don't like this story, change it. But ultimately, you are the only one that's in charge of your happiness. And if you can think about it in a different way, and even if that does mean doing a quite a fundamental shift in the way that your life is going, this isn't a dress rehearsal. We get one shot at life, and you've got to be as happy as you can make yourself. No one else is responsible, not your MD, not your manager, not your colleagues. You are responsible for your own happiness. And if things aren't going the right way that you want them to, change it. If you can't change it on your own, ask for help to change it. But just focus on you. You are the most important person in your world. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you explained that there. I thought you were saying everybody's happiness was down to me at first. Uh, but then, no, then you said uh, at, at the end, everybody's happiness is down to me too. So I'm, I'm happy with that, you know. Uh, then, Craig, you are the most important person in your world. You know that. Th- thank you. And what a way to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, th- thank you very much. You know, uh, really do appreciate your time and, and your insights in, into these very important subjects for, for our members and, and to the world at large, really, because it is affecting us all. Uh, you know, everything that's going on around the world is affecting us all. And, you know, I hope uh, our listeners have, have also enjoyed the conversation. I hope you found it valuable. And if you'd like further information on the user group and our mental health and well-being sessions please do visit sapusers.org or follow us on all of the main social media platforms and until the next time stay safe stay well and keep washing your hands